and uh, it's nice to see everyone uh, virtually. Uh, my name is Gurdeep and I'm here from the, the Seek Food Bank and I'm sorry it's going to be rushed, I just I do have a meeting at 11, I'm working from home um, and I'm sure most of you are as well but I'm stepping in last minute. Um, so yes, part is of the, the Seek Food Bank um, which was established almost 12 months ago um, through Seeks in Scotland. It's not a service we had initially, um, it came out of the pandemic, the lockdown and people not being able to get out uh, vulnerable people and older people and um, so the team kind of decided you know what is it how can we support and um, you know using the seek ethos of Lunger where we provide free food and all good varas for anyone who wants to come um, and we were like well if good varas are now closed how do we re-envision this how do we reimagine it so we then decided um, to set up the seek food bank which some of you might have heard of if not we are on social media um, and instead of cooking and serving hot meals in the Gurdwara, we've prepared weekly food parcels um, with all the usual gross groceries and particularly fresh food rather than tinned stuff. And just to kind of um, ensure it was durable over the week. And um, we started off doing this twice a week. And when it just shows you the kind of demand that was there uh, for the food parcels and for people that struggled who were suddenly out of a job and not able to travel out. Um, and we have been running for, for the last year and we're now on a, on a weekly basis. Um, and since then, we've now delivered over um, 100,000 food parcels and hot meals. Um, so it, it just shows you the scale of people that we are supported through the, the 12 months. Um, the, Seek, the Seek Faith teaches us to support um, and it's, it's available there for regardless of what background, faith, no faith, um, and 99% of our users come from outside the Sikh community um, and the volunteers you know, range from kind of young to senior, um, so it, it just kind of shows you that all walks of life um, were participating and giving up their time to support the Sikh Food Bank. Um, and young people also used the, the volunteering time to contribute to their Duke of Edinburgh. So they were still able to contribute to that and it wasn't on pause, even though they weren't able to do their normal outings that they do within school. Um, what we've been lucky to do um, during the summer, we were able to build up a multi-faith partnership um, with the Queen's Baptist Church. So this is based in Glasgow. Um, and we were based there for about three to four months. Um, the church had the space. Uh, we needed it and the resource was there while they couldn't use the church for their normal services. Um, and, you know, we were lucky to support a, a kind of higher number of people as well. Um, and it just kind of shows you, you know, that everyone just came together. We supported each other. Faith wasn't an issue. It was just help was needed, the resource was there and the space was there um, and we were able to work together. Um, one of the chefs actually within the church um, provided the hot meals for the homeless people um, with a hotel that um, where homeless people were then um, placed during the pandemic um, and then we delivered the hot meals to, to the hotel. Um, so it really was um, you know collaboration at its key. Um, the second element, I think, um, which was really important is that a lot of people would have missed out on our festivals um, celebration. Um, so to ensure people still kind of felt that it was still being celebrated, it was still being recognised. Uh, within the food parcels, we included Easter eggs during Easter. And we included halal food parcels for Eid, um, Indian sweets for Visaki, um, candles for Diwali. Um, and then to end off the year, um, we delivered 150 just over Christmas parcels um, and presents for the, the young children, you know, where their families were being supported um, and for the parents and older people, um, you know, because at a time where everyone comes together of no faith, you know, Christmas is a big thing just to have that big dinner. Um, where we couldn't do that, um, this was the, the small thing I think that we could contribute to just to make it seem normal that it was still being celebrated. Um, and just to just to finish off, we're really glad to be supported by Interface Scotland, particularly Maureen, who's also here today. Um, she's also visited our base um, in the West End. Um, you know, she's provided donations with her grandson, and it was really nice to see that community collaboration again. I think that's the most important and why the Seek Food Bank has succeeded so well. Um, and I think the team itself, you know, the volunteers, the, the drivers. Um, who deliver these parcels directly to their doorsteps and um, just to take that burden off that people are not coming to a place to collect their food parcels. There's no stigma against receiving it. We go to them. 
any community, so it's a rain Glasgow, rain Scotland, rain to Edinburgh, um, you know, there, there was just no restriction on how we could support anybody. Um, and, and Maureen seen that is really nice to have that, um, that support of Interfaith Scotland. Um, and some of you might know, we've been in the news, we've been recognised for the kind of Pride of Scotland Award, um, the Points of Light, which is from the Prime Minister. Um, and again, you know, the support there was not there for recognition, it was just purely there to help people in need at a very, very vulnerable and difficult time. Um, so that's kind of the, the background of the, the Seek Food Bank, how we deliver our parcels. We're still going right now because the lockdown still is in place. Um, yes, you know, it's been a nice service, but hopefully we're back to normal soon um, and can resume our, our normal life. Um, and I'm sorry, I will have to rush off. It's been really nice being part of this today. Um, if anyone does have any questions, we are on social media. You can get the details from the, the organisers. Um, and I don't know if um, Maureen wants to chip in um, just to say a few words, um, but I just want to say thank you. That was just a few points of the, the Seek Food Bank. Is um, Maureen stepping in? Oh, hey, thank, you. thank you very much. Before you start, Maureen, I think we should thank uh, Gurdip Kaur for stepping in at the very last minute and, and do a very good uh, uh, summary of what uh, the Sikh community does in, in Scotland. Uh, Charandeep was supposed to do this, but um, um, we are grateful for, for Gurdip to step in at the last moment. And the future is bright because she is the youngest so far that I've come across in, in our group <laughs> at the moment. So keep it up, Gurdip, keep it up. Thank you. Yes, carry on, Maureen. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to the presenters this morning. It's been, it's just sort of awe-inspiring to see how the faith communities have worked together right across the whole of the United Kingdom during this pandemic. It's been a challenging time for everyone. Um, but in in so many ways, it has brought just the power and resilience of faith and, you know, how at the heart of faith communities is this desire to serve, the de desire to help others. And that has just been so obvious right across the whole of um, the United Kingdom. And definitely, I can say I've seen that in Scotland and Good Deep is one example, um, the Sikh Food Bank of just uh, how people have pulled together and how there's been such great interface collaboration during the pooling together, which um, has been fabulous. Um, in, um, um, I, would, I think I'm going to be able to screen share if that's all right. So it's lovely to be here with all of you and hopefully my face will disappear from the screen and you're going to see instead um, a PowerPoint presentation, um, which... Uh, so you probably know that um, my name is Maureen, I'm Director of Interfaith Scotland, and so it's been a great honour and privilege for me to be working with the faith communities of Scotland during this really challenging time of uh, the pandemic. I mean, at all times it's a privilege, but it certainly um, has been exceptional during this time. Uh, one of the things that happened very early on in lockdown uh, for Interfaith Scotland, now I hope that, yeah, this is where now it's not... Uh, I'm pressing the button to go to the next, uh, <laughs> the next thing on my screen and it's not, not happening. So let's see if I can, oh, that's such a shame. Um, uh, Maureen, would you, mm. would you like me to share it instead? Yeah, and let's see if it works better for you. It seems to have frozen for me, uh, Ashley, and I know I sent it to you in case we had this technical hitch. So let's try again and it will be slide number two. One sec, I'm just loading it up, won't be long. A very good marketing technique, Maureen. I'll be holidaying in Scotland very soon. I thought that was a nice picture of Scotland, actually. I thought it just make people feel that, uh, you know, you'd kind of visited Scotland with me there. Yeah, so thank you, Ashley, and it's working for Ashley. That's great. So very early on during the pandemic, um, we got fun. The Scottish government asked us if we would manage um, a couple of funds. Well, the first one was the immediate COVID relief fund. And that was, they had, the Scottish government had recognised that faith communities were in a very key position to help the most vulnerable, isolated, lonely, um, and struggling at the grassroots, at the co faith of, of society, that the faith communities were, you know, they're, they're right at the heart of community, actually. And so I think it was a very wise decision of the Scottish government to say, please, as Interface Scotland, could you manage this fund? 
that would, you know, ask faith communities to apply for a small amount of seed funding, really, to go ahead and really help people at the grassroots of society. I'll talk about the opening places of worship fund safely um, after this one. So if we go on to the next slide, so I'll just give you an idea of, you know, just what you saw with Gurdeep was reflected right across Scotland by faith communities. So the communities who hosted projects to support others, there was 22 Christian um, communities, seven Muslim, three Hindu, two Jewish, three Buddhist, three Sikh, two Baha'i. There were seven local interfaith groups undertook projects and 10 community organisations. We had to develop a structure of who we could give the money to. And we, we, we only gave money to those that were our trusted partners, those that we knew um, would report back to us and give us receipts and show how the money was spent. So um, this was um, amazing that so many people said, yes, we can pick up this fund and we can do things at the local level. The key thing was food and medicine deliveries, making masks for NHS workers, because it, there was none at some point early on in the pandemic providing Zoom engagement events for communities so they could buy you know, bigger Zoom packages so that they could really engage with their whole community, providing phone-in services, providing laptops for refugees, additional support for the digitally deprived, and so many other things. Um, but th these were some of the basic things that happened right across the whole of Scotland. Um, so I'll go on to the next slide, if that's all right. Um, I thought it would be really nice just to share a tiny, just a one minute video um, that just showed a little bit of this and also our First Minister actually thanking the communities of Scotland for the faith communities for what they've done. So fingers crossed this works, Ashley, <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> you may have to put on the sound. I notice you've not got sound on, Ashley. Help with their mental health and wellbeing. Over 100,000 meals families and people in need. We were looking at six. Are people able to hear that? Um, I think you might have to play it from the beginning again. It came on just within about six or seven seconds of playing. So you might have to turn it up just a teeny wee bit. How long is this uh, video? It's 50 seconds. 60 meals a day, six days a, a week. People won't have to suffer and they'll have full bellies. Scotland's faith communities and interfaith groups make a massive contribution to our society. Across the country, faith communities and interfaith groups have delivered food and support to vulnerable people. You <sighs> should we should we you've reached I'm, out I'm to those seeking who advice are should we and you've provided people with solace comfort and spiritual guidance when they've needed it most in doing so you've helped to mitigate some of the worst impacts of this crisis and you've demonstrated values of solidarity compassion and love which are so important to our society overall so you can go on to the next slide. Thank you. I'm guessing it's uh, it's nearly time for me to, to finish, but these are just some sample comments. Can't thank you enough for the kindness shown to the patients that helped us, um, the receiving food parcels, you know, just all, all you know, just there was numerous comments that, that came from faith communities, local and faith groups and individuals right across the whole of Scotland just you know, that final one, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've given me my life back. I can now connect with the lifeline that is my faith community. That was from um, an asylum seeker. So this, just how powerful it is to step up and serve. And we were just really delighted that we could be a conduit to help as many faith communities as possible, support grassroots of society. And then the final slide, and that's me finished, I think is in my... And we did a places of worship fund as well. And, you know, faith communities need their places of worship very often just for their mental health, their connection. Um, and we had little brief windows of opportunity when faith communities were open. So we had a places of worship fund and that was to allow faith communities to open up safely. Um, so, that you know, providing um, PPE screens, you know, that they, for ministers to be able to, to deliver their service safely. Um, signposting, uh, wash facilities, all these kind of things. So there was 56 places of worship were, were assisted as well. Um, 
So I don't want to take too much time, but anyway, it has been a great privilege to see all this interfaith work going on across um, Scotland and particularly in service of others. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh,